conducted a consolidated exercise on work, energy, and power. Now we have a problem on the board, and the problem says, when I decide, we have Lindiwe and Temba. Lindiwe and Temba both stand there at point A on top of the rail. Now, Lindiwe, remember, Lindiwe is a lady and Temba is, is, is a guy here. Temba decided to take a risk and Temba decided, no, you know what? I want to reach the ground and I'm going to use only one way. And one way is to fall directly from point A to point B, vertical. So Temba decides to go down like that. Lindiwe is a little bit frightened. So Lindiwe rolls down the ramp slowly. Now the question, the first question says, state the principle of conservation of mechanical energy. State the principle of conservation of mechanical energy. I'll answer the question for you guys. The principle says, mechanical energy of a closed system is constant. I repeat, the mechanical energy of a closed system is constant. Now let's go to question number two. Question number two, I'll say it slowly. Draw the free body diagram for both Lindy Whip and Temba, showing all the forces acting on Temba and Lindy Whip. Now we are going to model Temba as an object, right? And we are going to draw the free body diagram. Now let's start with Temba. We are saying Temba. Good. Remember, Temba falls. Temba decides to fall like that. If you fall, you still remember projectile. What is a projectile? An object that can be projected up so that any, the only force that's acting on it is the force of gravity. Even here is the case. So Temba is going to be a projectile. So the force that is going to act on Temba is what? Is the gravitational force. Now, if you look at Temba, Temba is like that. So the force that's acting on Temba is that, Fg. Good. Now let's go to Lindy. Good. Now remember, Lindy decides to roll down the, the rail. Now we are told that there's a constant frictional force that's acting on Lindy. Right? There's a constant frictional force that's acting on Lindiwe. And remember, Lindiwe is going down. Means if Lindiwe is going down, force of gravity is responsible for the motion of Lindiwe. Because remember, what is the force of gravity? Force of gravity seeks to pull everything towards its, the center of the earth. So if Lindiwe is going down, this force of gravity is acting on Lindiwe, we said. Now, let's move. So I'm, I'm going to draw, because a ramp is like that. So, Temporarily, I'm going to say, this is my name. And Lindu is somewhere there. Good. Now I'm going to have the normal force, because there's a surface. If an object is moving or resting on top of the surface, there's always going to be a normal force. So there's a surface, I'm going to have normal force N. Right? Now, there's always a force that is acting downward. What force is that? Gravitational force. Now we have that Fg. Good. And we are told again, we are told again that there's a constant frictional force that, that is acting on Lindu. Lindu is going down, friction opposes the motion. So friction is going to act that way, up. Now we have frictional force here. Frictional force. So we have that the free body diagram. The force of gravity that is acting on the way, the normal force that's acting on the way, and the frictional force that's acting on the way. I'm giving theta there so I can dissociate my gravity into its component. Remember, I'm giving theta again. I said you draw gravitational force that balances the normal force here. So I'm going to have FGV, vertical. Then I'm going to have this one, which is FGH or FG parallel. So I'm going to have my theta there. So you can draw it like that as well. So when you dissociate your 
gravity into its components. So we have that structure for LinkedIn, the free body diagram for LinkedIn. The second and last question. So you got the first question was the state, state the principle of conservation of mechanical energy. And our answer was the mechanical energy of a closed system is constant. Now the second question was asked then, draw the free body diagram for both timber and linking. Now timber, we are told timber decides to jump from point A to point B. So timber is jumping like that, so timber is a projector. The force that is acting on timber is the force of gravity. Now secondly we have Lindy Way. Lindy Way is a lady, so a little bit frightened. So Lindy Way decides to roll down the, the ramp gently. But as she rolls, you are noted uh, Lindy Cat. As she rolls down the ramp, there's a force of friction that is acting on Lindy. Say to There is no applied force. There's no applied force. There's no applied force because we told that both of them are from rest. And Lindy Way just decided to. So the, the force that is responsible for the movement of Lindy is the force of gravity. That's how powerful gravity is. Yeah. So there's no applied force. There's no engine. If Lindy had an engine, if it was a car going down, then engine, it was going to be responsible. Or if, if it was the car going up, then engine, then that's where you find the applied force. But in this case, gravity is the, the one responsible for the motion of Lindy downwards. Now, we, we understand the free body diagram of both Lindy Wave and Temple. Yes, now, let's move. Now, the second last question says, use the principle of conservation of mechanical energy to calculate the speed of terminal at point B. The ramp is 4 meter high, right? So the question says, you, uh, use the principle of conservation of mechanical energy to calculate the speed of timber at point B. Let me pull this thing down so that we can see this diagram. So we have this diagram here, point A, point B, point C. Tamba decides to jump from here to here. Lindy Way decides to roll down the ramp slowly. And the question says, use the principle of mechanical energy, conservation of mechanical energy to calculate the speed of timber at point B as the minute he arrives at point B. Now I'm going to write my answer here. So we said that U plus EK is equals to U plus EK. This is final. This is initial. So here we have MGH plus half MV squared initial. MGH plus half MV. Good. Now this is initial. This is final. Now let's initial. Temba. Temba is initially at a height of 4 meter. So the mass of Temba, the mass of Temba is 80 kg. And the mass of Lindy I write the mass of Lindy here, let's say 40 kg. The mass of Temba is 80 kg. Uh, 80 kg. The mass of Lindy is 40 kg. So the mass of Temba is 80 kg. So we have that a constant 9,8. Initially, the height, initially, Temba is 4 meter high. So I have 4 there, plus half the mass of uh, a timber is, remember timber is the one, they say for timber, calculate the speed of timber here. So we are still using 80 here, 80, uh, initial velocity of timber is 0, initial, because they say little, they stand, so 0. So this will go to 0. So the mass of timber, the mass of timber at point B, it's still 80. Now we have the constant 9.8. So we have the height 0. The height here at B is 0. So this will go to 0. Plus half the mass is, the mass of timber is 80. The speed here, we are looking for the speed here. So we don't know. So let's punch this in the calculator. Let's see. Three thousand two hundred and thirty-six. Just like that. Yes. Good. Now here we are going to have forty v f square. So I divide by forty. I divide by forty. Press that. Three thousand 
force that is acting on the way is constant and its magnitude is 1.5 newtons. So we are doing. So let's have Lindy way again. We have Lindy, remember we have Lindy way, we had Lindy way, so that was normal force. So that was Fg. So that was FGV, so that was uh, this way, FGH, and that was the frictional force, and we had 30 here. Still remember that, now we are told that the magnitude of the frictional force that is acting on the DW is constant, and its magnitude, FR, is 1,5 newtons, we are told that. So the question says, use the work energy theorem to calculate the velocity, the, the speed of wind at point C. Point C is the, at the bottom, the bottom of the ramp. So we are going to use the work energy theorem to calculate the speed of wind at point C. Now, what does the work energy theorem say? The work energy theorem says the work net is equal to change in kinetic energy. Like that. Now, but for us to be able to calculate the work net, we need to find all the forces which are doing work on the DW. We have four forces here. These two forces are not doing any work because Lindu is not jumping up and down. So there's no displacement vertical. So Lindu is not jumping up and down. So Lindu rests on the ground. So there are only two forces which are doing work on the DW. Which are those horizontal forces, which is the force of friction and the force of gravity. But you must be very careful what kind of gravity. The parallel component of gravity, which I denote by FGH, FG horizontal. Do you guys understand? If Lindo was jumping up and down, then you could be saying these forces at least are doing something. But because Lindo will rest on the ramp as it, she slides down, it clearly shows that the normal force balances with the gravitational, the vertical component of gravity. So we cancel the two. So let's find the work done by friction. Work done by friction, we are told is 1,5, but uh, friction opposes the motion. I said a phase way of writing negative one is cos 180. So a student can decide to say negative, negative 1.5, negative 1.5. Right? Because friction opposes the motion. What is the distance of the what is what is what is what is the distance that the window travels? Seven. seven. So I'm going to have seven there multiplied by seven. So negative one comma five multiplied by seven is negative ten comma five joules. A student, another student could have said one comma five cos one eighty. Time is uh, still negative 10,5 shoot. The reason why 1,8, 1, 1,8, remember uh, grade 7, you did, uh, you do something like that. And you said the magnitude of this angle is 1,8. Grade 7, you, you did that in grade 7. So because friction opposes the motion, friction opposes the motion, that's why you put a negative. Good. Now let's do the work done by the parallel component of current. I call it FGH, FG horizontal. Good. Now 
What is the trick ratio that we are going to use? Remember, we got this angle here. Can you take a guess? Sine. Sine. Why? Sine incorporates the opposite with the hypotenuse. Remember, here, by knowing the mass of Lindy wave and the gravitational constant, we already know the weight, we already know the force of gravity. Right? Now, if we have the force of gravity and we want to know this, we can only use the trig ratio that incorporates the opposite and the hypotenuse. And the trig ratio which incorporates the opposite and the hypotenuse is called what? Sine. So we're going to have what? Mg. Mg is gravity. Mg is gravity. Sine of 30. It's 30, right? 30. So here we are, we are still dealing with the force. But where is force multiplied by distance? So the distance is 7. Input that in the calculator, we are going to have mg. What's the mass of the with 40? So we're going to have 40 times 9,8 sine of 30 times 7. The answer is. Forty multiplied by nine point eight multiplied by sine of thirty multiplied by seven. One thousand three hundred. Come again. One thousand three hundred. One thousand three hundred. Seventy two. Seventy two joules. Good. Now we can find net weight. Work net is equal to work done by friction plus work done by Fg horizontal, which can be negative 10,5 plus 13,72 we are dealing with joules here so the answer is 1, 3, 6, 1, 3 the answer is 1, 3 negative 10,5 negative 10,5 Plus negative ten comma five plus it's one three one three six one comma five six one comma five joules. So we, we have the network done. Can I wrap that? Yes. Good. So I have the network done. Let's apply the weight energy theorem. Remember the question was calculate the speed of lead weight at point C. We haven't answered the question. So Work energy theorem says, okay. Now I have that one three six one comma five is equal to half m v f squared v i squared. Now one three six one comma five half forty v f squared. I don't know. This will be zero, right? This will be zero. Good. Now I have one three six one comma five twenty v f squared. Twenty half times is forty is twenty. So I divide by twenty. I divide by twenty. This cancels that. So one three six one comma five divided by twenty is sixty eight comma seven seven. Sixty eight comma zero seven five v f squared. I root it. I root it like that. What's the answer? 8, 5. 8, 5 meters per second. Good. Now, that was a consolidated exercise. What have we learned today? Let's summarize. We learned three definitions. Force, work, power. And we said force from grade 7, we were taught force is a push or a pull. But today in grade 12, we have created a little bit and we said we can bring this force into components. And we did bring the force into components. Particularly if you are looking at the work that is being done in a horizontal way and that the force is applied at an angle, we use a trick ratio that is called cos because cos incorporates the adjacent and the hypotenuse. And then we again spoke about work and we said the work is done on an object if a force is applied in an object and that force causes an object to accelerate a certain direction, a certain displacement. Now we spoke about power 
And we said power is nothing than the rate at which the work is done. And we did a very fantastic exercise here of Lindikaya and Setu. And we said if you are asked who's more powerful between Lindikaya and Setu, uh, given the exercise, the one who completes the exercise faster than the other will have more power than the other. It's more practical. Good. And then we spoke about uh, two theorems, or should I say principles. The first principle we said the conservation of mechanical energy. And we said mechanical energy the, of, an, of a closed system is constant. Now, we moved forward and we stated the work energy theorem. And we said the work energy theorem states that the network done, the network done, and we, with a particular emphasis on net, net total, the total work done on an object is equal to its change in kinetic energy. Now, we also dealt with three types of energy, but I told you that in the world we don't have those three types of energy only, but the scope of work only allows us to deal with those three kinds. What, what are those three kinds? Potential energy, the one that you have because of your position above the Earth's surface, and we tempted gravitational potential energy, and we also did what you call kinetic energy. And we said kinetic energy is the energy that you have because of your motion. And we dealt with mechanical energy, and we did an example of a bicycle to practicalize it. And we said uh, mechanical energy is the sum of kinetic energy and potential energy. And we, we proceeded and we saw the application of both the principles. Let me give you a tip. If the examiner starts by saying, state the principle of conservation of mechanical energy. Somewhere, somehow, you are going to apply that principle by calculating. Now, which one is more easier than the, between the work energy principle, the work energy theorem and the principle of conservation of mechanical? I find the principle of conservation of mechanical energy easier. Because for that one, you don't need a free body diagram. But for the work energy theorem, you are in trouble if you complete the question that asks you to say, use the work energy theorem to calculate something without drawing the free body diagram first. You need to draw the free body diagram first before you apply it. If there are, any, if there are no any other questions, guys, I'm pleased to say that we have completed the chapter on work, energy, and power.